Jamie, obviously, I'm sure you'd want to be fighting here coming off a massive win, but I guess, so what are the emotions now, and how is camp uh, now just a few days ahead of a massive fight here in Sydney? Yeah, man, always always would rather a win um, getting in there, but it's uh, it's been a, just like, a, I guess, a, a big fire lit under me for this fight, so the camp's been, a, it's been a good, strong camp, man, so we're... Uh, we, I've been I've been motivated every single day thinking about that last loss. So I've uh, I've really kicked that up a gear this camp, and I'm I'm looking forward to going out and showing it. Have your coaches had to pull you back a little bit at all because they don't want you to maybe overtrain or kind of push too hard, trying to erase the memories of the last fight? Uh, no, the, my coaches always have to pull me back from overtraining. <laughs> That's just uh, I th I think if you're not getting pulled back from overtraining, you're not training hard enough. When they came to you with John, what did you make of the name that came across? Because he's obviously been in the UFC for like t almost 10 years, if not more. So when John Medesi's name came across your table, what did you think? Yeah, super excited, man. Super excited and um, a real honor to be to be sharing the cage with him. Um, he's a G. He's a, he's a G in the sport. Uh, tons of experience, tons of skill. Um, so, yeah, it's gonna. Be, it was really one that made me go, whoa, fuck yeah. <laughs> How do you see this fight playing out when you do watch tape on him? Because he's obviously well-rounded, but he's he's never had a submission win in his in his pro career. He's, I think, 14, 15 decisions, like 10 wins, five losses. So what do you make of – how do you think this fight will play out? I think it'll be uh, him trying to frustrate me, to be honest. I think it'll be him trying to use um, – his skill and his his fight experience to to frustrate me, lead me into traps. Um, so we've been working hard. Uh, we've had had some great kickboxers, great bodies in for this camp, and um, I, I'm really excited to show the levels that I've come up, uh, especially in the striking department. And it's not often that a, a fighter that like John, like he might not have the biggest name in terms of like the casual fans, but his coach is very famous. His coach is very respected and for us a hobby. So I, I'm not sure if you've ever fought one of his students at all, or when you look across the octagon, you see someone like for a hobby looking back at you. What does that, do you get any emotions off of that considering all this tutelage that he's given? Not really now. Um, I'd say like when I first broke into the, into the organization, in the UFC, it was, um, but I'm, I'm, I'm like this is my ninth fight, so I'm uh, I'm pretty comfortable here now, and um, I know I belong here. So it's it's another day in the office, but uh, we're just super super focused on on what we got to do. Uh, Jamie, you said after your last fight, um, you put a post on your Instagram, and, and you basically said you learned a valuable lesson. I'm just wondering if you could uh, elaborate on what that lesson was. Yeah, yeah. Um, valuable lesson learnt there uh just we, like this sport there is zero uh margin for error you, you you can't afford to become complacent in there and that's exactly what i did um i was i was, I was rushing the finish a little bit and i just dis disrespected my opponent's power um that mistake won't be happening again and uh again like that's what we did this camp we we went back to the drawing board of fundamentals not making mistakes really just a hundred percent focus uh in in the training in the sessions and uh yeah lo again looking forward to to going out and showing it what how nice is it to not have to travel to vegas and to the states and you know central coast boy yourself so how nice is it to to get a, a fight you know in your home state oh mate it's it's the fucking best <laughs> it's uh yeah can't can't describe how good it is uh, it takes like half the stress off you on fight week so um and I'm, I'm feeling great so yeah looking forward to it one last one can i get your official prediction um for this fight on sunday i predict the third round knockout Uh, Jamie, when we last spoke to you, you know, you were always talking about how you have to add new skills and find new ways of doing things. I was just wondering, heading into this fight, what, if anything, have you changed or added into your fight camp and preparation? Um, patience, I would say. Patience and uh, understanding of uh, our, our distance and our, our shot selection. That, that's that been a big one this camp. Um, but, again, like... We're, we're, we're working everything all the time so it's it's a constant uh evolution it's a constant um getting better at the whole game 
Uh, but that that'll never change. So we're picking up new skills and. Um, I think it's going to show this weekend. For sure. And last one for me, we're starting to see more and more cards, you know, stacked with Australian talent. Do you think that Australia has finally sort of solidified itself as a breeding ground for top tier international mixed martial artists? 100%. 100% it has. Um, like what we've had three champions from, from our neck of the woods, New Zealand and Australia, um, two currents, uh, a pound for pound goat and it's not just him like obviously um it's not just them them two athletes it's our whole our whole country uh the the scene is just getting bigger and bigger there's more and more fighters breaking through and um we we come to fight you know what i mean we we come to scrap um so that's always like we're we're in the the biggest organization in the world that's what people want to see people want to see uh motherfuckers going out and doing it and, and getting after it, getting finishes. So that I think Aussies are uh, we, we hold ourselves proudly uh, proudly for that. Jamie, just over here, uh, talking about that and you mentioned you had some a good a good amount of bodies in for your camp. I was wondering who are some of the people you're training with from the scene? Uh we well, yeah we had Benny Regan. Um he was he was probably my main sparring partner for this whole camp. Um he's a world champion kickboxer. Uh years and years and years of high level experience right there so uh we had uh Edema Tekshira, um michael stanoff and some of the lines them boys um so yeah i had i had a really good camp man really good camp with uh, a lot of great bodies for john mcdessey too and i wanted to ask you about this someone i know you've uh, trained with uh in the past justin van heden i was speaking to him the other day and he told me a story about getting confused for you and people coming up to him and thinking that uh he is you and you are him. Has anything like that ever happened to you? Uh, no, nah, not with Justin. <laughs> that's, oh uh, man, that, that's, that's an insult being compared to that guy. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But no, nah, no, nah, nah, that doesn't happen. <laughs> Fair enough. Thank you. Just down the front here, Jamie. Um, so, like you said, you predicted round three knockout. Where, where do you see um, you going forward from that fight? What, what's the, what, are the, what are the plans for you? Uh, I'm not looking ahead, to be honest. Um, I never look ahead of my fights. Uh, I guess in terms of me, myself, I, I wanted to get four fights in this year. So we'll see how we how we come out of this fight. Um, but as far as what's next, I'm, I'm not looking for, uh, past John McDessie. John, my, my, my sights are on John McDessie right now. And just sort of uh, what are your predictions for the main event? What do you think that's going to end up? Um I'll predict it the same way that I predicted is his last win with the second round knockout. Thank yeah. you. Anything else? Okay, thank you.